Hi knitters, uh, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I'm your host Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. As always, find my Ravelry, Instagram, Ko-Fi, Patreon linked in the description below, as well as links to any dyers, makers, and designers that I talk about. And first, I want to apologize. I know this episode is a few days late. Um, life has been crazy, um, I, and that leads me to the title, Can I Have It All? Um, I am working very hard at you know my full-time job i'm still trying to crank out test knits and i'm dating again so like i went off dating for like a month just to focus on the stuff that i had going on with uh, my father and my brother and you know life in general and now i'm back in the dating and i'm just like i have no time i have no time there's not enough hours in the day and like in so far in the month of April, I've only finished uh, one garment. And when you look at my past, like January, February, and March, I was doing three garments a month, each month, three garments. That's how I got to nine. And then April, it's like, I hit a brick wall. Um, and that's, uh, that's accurate to how I'm feeling. Um, yeah, so I actually have a date tonight, so I'm trying to like record this really quickly so I can I can like leave and actually have something for you all. So that's the title of this episode. I'm sorry if I seem frenetic. Um, if I seem frenetic, it's because I am. But uh, really quickly, I'm wearing the Bessie crop. If uh, you have been around for a while, you remember I made this last year. This is by Jacqueline Sislik. And I was in the test knit group and this main, the yarn, not the main, the only yarn, like I said, frenetic. Um, the yarn is from Magpie Fibers. It is their uh, swanky sock. It has a cashmere content, I believe, without looking at any label. So that's why it has a really good drape and sheen to it. I really, I love this piece. Or maybe it was silk content. God, I don't know. It has some luxury fiber in it. It's really lovely. The color is Tupelo Honey. And I was very much obsessed with this. And I still am. I wear it quite frequently. Um, I, it's a great versatile piece. Um, yeah, love it. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. Then, okay, so I have been really good since Portland about not getting yarn. That short, short streak is now over because um, when I'm stressed, I tend to, to make purchases. And I'm sure many of you can understand that impulse. Um, I have been very stressed. Um, my father and my brother, I went to see them and then work and you know, everything else. So I, I bought a lot. Um, so let's just get into it. Let's, let's get into it. Okay. So Explorer Knits had her Ireland update uh, this past weekend. And uh, yes, I did, I did make a purchase on it. I won't talk about what I got on it until I get my yarn in. Rest assured, I will definitely have things to show you. Um, but I bring up Explorer Knits because uh, before that, I received her spring tunnels. Um, I was really excited about her spring tunnels. I, Allie has such a great eye for color adore that woman. She's so sweet. So sweet. Like I kind of wish she had a more like a mean bone in her body so she could stand up to people when they're mean to her because she really doesn't deserve it. She cares so much. She works so hard and she's so sweet. Um, but anyway, so she has a great eye for color. She's so talented and I ordered two colors in a base I normally don't work with. Um, and I got Surrey. So I know what you guys are thinking, like, R O U Surrey, you, you know, use mohair all the time. Like, Surrey's not that different. It actually, it is very different, in my opinion, of course, everybody has their own opinion. In my opinion, Surrey and mohair are completely different because mohair, because of this, I mean, they both have silk content, but because of the characteristics of mohair rather than Surrey, um, mohair has a sheen to it. It has a shine. And I really love that. I love shine. Um, look at my new nails, like, look at my new nails. I have shine, okay? So, like, it's very important to me. And, uh, Surrey is, tends to be more matted. Uh, dyers, dyers can confirm. Surrey tends to look more matted, um, just because of the way that the fiber behaves. Um, and Surrey is from alpaca, whereas mohair is from goat. Um, and 
I tend to prefer mohair over Surrey, but Allie does not like mohair, so she only works with Surrey. And if I want fluffy from Allie, I need Surrey. And it is really soft. I will say, it's really soft. I personally don't find mohair itchy, you guys know that. Um, but I know a lot of people do, including Allie, but she does like Surrey and what works for Allie works for me. So yeah, um, this colorway is Rose Quartz. This colorway is linen. I'm I planning on holding linen with something a bit more rustic looking just to get a thicker gauge. I'm planning on holding Rose Quartz with, well, one of Allie's Ireland colors. I'll wait until it comes in so I could show you how they look together. But rest assured, um, I won't be working with Surrey, Surrey single. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys because I really do love these colors and I did want to give a shout out to Allie because God, she deserves every ounce of success she has without people being mean to her. It really bothers me when people are mean to dyers or like anybody, anybody, like just don't be mean. Anyway, anyway sorry, that's just my, my thing. Okay, um, I also, I did go to the McKinney Knittery uh, while I was visiting my father, I drove down to Dallas with my brother and we did like a siblings day out, which was very fun. We don't spend a lot of time, like just one-on-one -on -one very much, uh, my brother and I. So it was really nice to take a, a trip with my brother and spend some time with him. And um, we went to downtown McKinney, which you guys know I love. Downtown McKinney has the McKinney Knittery, which is a great yarn store. It also has this really, really amazing Korean fried chicken place called Mad Four Chicken with the number four for Mad Four Chicken. So dang good, you guys. So good. And it has Emporium Pies, which is the best pie in the entire country, hands down. So I made him go to all three and he didn't care for the yarn store as much, but he did love the fried chicken and the pie. So it has my brother's stamp of approval. McKinney is, downtown McKinney is, is very cute. Okay, so I did get some yarn while I was there. Like I said, um, I was visiting my father. It was stressful. I don't want to talk about it. And I bought yarn because I was stressed. Um, so yeah, here's here's what I got. So McKinney Knittery is one of uh, La Bien uh U.S. stockists, and I got the colorway Jana on DK. It's this lovely deep forest green. And you can see it still looks good against my skin, which you guys know that's how I judge a green, whether or not I'm gonna take it because I only make garments and so it has to look good against my skin. I do really like it. Yeah. Um, I am not 100% sure what I wanna make with it. I probably won't work with it until later in the fall or winter because it's not really a spring summer color to me. Um, but it is quite lovely. It actually looks really good with the Tupelo honey. Hmm. Yeah, so that's what I got. Uh, I also got this. So I've seen it carried at other places. This is called Ilimani um, Sabri. I don't, Ilimani is the brand, Sabri is the line. And this is 85% cotton, 15% baby alpaca. And I got the fingering weight. There's also a DK weight. And like I said, I wanted to show you guys more uh, summer geared fibers because a lot of people feel like they can't knit during the summer because their hands get hot. And trust me, I understand. I can't stand heat and sweating. It's all awful. So it's really important for me to show you guys that you can keep knitting during the summer even when it is hot without cranking up your AC, you know, to... I don't even know what temperature people consider cold anymore. Um, but yeah, so this, again, it's overwhelmingly cotton, but because of the alpaca content, it feels incredibly soft. If you just handed this to me, no label, I would not know it was cotton. I find that cotton can feel very dry in my hands. Um, if you've felt like really cottony yarn, you will kind of know what I'm saying when I say like a dry texture. But with the alpaca content, I truly would have no idea. I would consider this like, if I didn't have the label, I would be like, oh, it definitely has a luxury fiber in it um, because I could tell with the slight halo of the, of the alpaca, but I would never ever have guessed cotton. And so I'm really excited to use it. I kind of wish I had more room in my suitcase because if I had more room in my suitcase, I would have bought the DK weight as well, but I didn't because I was being relatively responsible. And I know what you're thinking, Aro, you could have just bought another suitcase, but I already did that for Portland. 
I did that for Portland and I don't want to do it again. I, I feel like Portland was one of those things that has to be an aberration. That has to be one of those things like, remember when? That was wild. And I never repeat that behavior. <laughs> so that's what I'm aiming for. Um, but yeah, so this uh, Illimani Sabri, and again, I'm going to link everything. Um, I'm really excited to work with it. I'm really excited. I've never used an 85% cotton, 15% alpaca. Like I don't even, I have used cotton yarn, but I didn't enjoy it. Even 50 merino, 50 cotton, I have tried so many times to use. I hate the texture, it's so dry, but this feels incredible and I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I chose a very neutral color, super neutral, because I think it would look amazing in an Ozetta or a Cadre pattern because their silhouettes and designs are just so timeless. Um, so I'm really excited, okay? I don't know how many times I've said that, but it's true. The last yarn I got from the McKinney Knittery is from Moondrake, and it's this perfect knit. Um, this is colorway is called Frozen, and I got it on Sport. And again, I got sweater quantity of all these. It's just, I can't hold that many skeins at once. Somebody asked me like, how do you get sweater quantity out of just two? And I'm like, no, there's more. I just, I can't hold like that many skeins. I'm really uncoordinated. So yeah, um, again, this is Sport Weight Frozen, and it's this gorgeous, gorgeous mint. Like you can see, it's not just like, there is depth to the dye. Um, and what I mean by that is it's not a flat color. I don't even think I have an example of a flat color because I just, I prefer indie dyed yarn. Um, a flat color happens more often with uh, commercial dyed yarn because they use like these ginormous vats. Um, and with indie dyed, generally it's poured. Um, so there is a natural variegation, even in a, a single tone. Um, that's what I love. I love that. I don't like a flat um, look. I don't know if I'm doing a good job explaining that, but some of you may understand what I'm saying, and I hope you do. Yeah, but like I said, this is a perfect mint. I'm really excited about this. I've wanted Moondrake for a long time, but it was really lovely to see an indie dyed yarn carried in the McKinney Knittery. They have a lot of options. I'm not even like they have so many. They have Suburban Stitcher, who is a good friend of mine. Uh, they have, God, they have uh, Camellia Fiber Company, Traveling Yarn, Mad Tosh, which I guess technically is an indie anymore, but um, like they just, they have so many options, you guys. And they have a website. Um, I highly recommend you check it out. Or if you're in Texas, it's definitely worth a trip. McKinney Nittery, it's gorgeous. I love it. And like I said, the fried chicken and the pie so good okay all right um i did get more yarn i did get more yarn um I'll, I'll show you okay so wildwood fibers so this is wildwood fibers uh the person who runs it her name is april and she has uh she's chronically ill she has lyme disease and she is an asian woman and um one of my best friends growing up had lyme disease so when i heard that april had the you know had this disease i was really like I wanted to support her and I started from buying from her in 2020 in the pandemic and since then I haven't bought from her in a while she's kind of stepped back from dying because with Lyme disease you you get in these spells where you have like no energy so she's had to take a step back from dying for a bit um and she put out a thing saying like hey I would appreciate it you know if you guys could buy what I have in stock you know and um, I was really excited because I didn't realize how much she had in stock, like a lot, a lot. I got two sweater quantities. I don't know why I'm whispering, like you guys aren't gonna hear it if I whisper it. Um, I got two sweater quantities and this is one of them. This colorway uh, is called Saltwater Kiss. And this is on her sport weight base called Echo. And Echo is very interesting because it's 50% recycled wool and 50% tensile. Um, I have never used this base before. Tensile, to my knowledge, is a plant fiber. If I'm making that up, I am sorry. But it's used in some of my favorite button downs and it feels amazing. Um, and I'm just really excited to use something, a base that's new to me. There's a slight sheen from it, I believe from the tensile, which is why I believe it's a, a plant fiber because bamboo has that sheen to it, right? 
and I love the fact that it's recycled wool. That's um, I'm gonna address that really quick. Some people have asked me like why I support superwash yarns. For me, it's a texture thing. I cannot stand rustic yarn. Like it really like it. It's a texture thing. I I I can't even use like rough wooden needles. My likey needles that I I use predominantly. The fact that I can feel the wood grain like really irks me. Like I will dip them in some kind of sealant to avoid that. Like that's how texturally focused I am about the smoothness. Like I say it as a joke, but like I really need things to be smooth. Um, <laughs> like really. So I understand that a lot of people are concerned about the environment and, you know, supporting more sustainable habits, uh, especially when it comes to the yarn community. But I want to say I haven't bought commercial clothes for like years. If I do buy commercial clothes, I keep them for at least five years. So it seems that it, I don't believe in anything that's like ethical consumerism. There's no such thing. We're all problematic in some way because consumption in this day and age is based on problematic practices. So I'm not gonna tell somebody you shouldn't use that yarn. I like, that's my biggest pet peeve because you don't know someone's circumstances. Like, I want to encourage more ecologically minded purchases, uh, especially in yarn, but a lot of people can't afford it. Like yarn is expensive. And the more qualities you look for, like, like sustainably sourced wool, like um, naturally dyed, all of that adds to the cost of it and it becomes cost prohibitive. So my big thing is I want everybody who wants to knit to be able to knit whether it's you use you have to use acrylic because you're allergic to something or you have to buy from knit picks because you just can't afford fancy yarn i don't care like it's about the craft to me so i i understand some people are really passionate about the you know environmental impact of wool okay but i'm not going to shame anybody for choosing to use any kind of yarn if you want to i can't stop you like if you want to yell at me you can yell at me whatever but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that mouthpiece. So the few people I've had in my DMs, like, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not doing that. I'm not playing that game. I'm not justifying myself. That's it. I like knitting. I'm going to let people knit what they want with what they want. And that's fine. Anyway, sorry. Getting off of my soapbox now. Love this. Love this. And again, that's Salt Water Kiss from uh, Wildwood Fibers and April's really lovely, excited about the new base, to, new to me base, new to me. Um, and that's 50% wall, 50% tensile. I did make another purchase. Like I said, I got two sweater quantity from April. And the other one is this gorgeous color. Like, I don't know if you guys saw my unboxing video in my stories, but I literally like squealed when I opened it because this color, life, gives me life. Okay, so this is her worsted weight base and the colorway is called Pearlescent and it is just knockout. Um, it, as you can see, it's a white creamy base with lavender, almost pink variation in it. And again, amazing. And I wanna show you this knit up because normally I don't like to use yarns, like just brand new yarns for test knits that I'm getting. Um, but when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is what I'm casting on right now because I have the perfect pattern for it. I've, I'm in the perfect test knit for it. So this knits up to this. And you can see how perfect it is for the texture because with, with uh, textured, patterns like this, it really is important to use a solid color, at least in my opinion. Some people prefer variegated for everything and that's fine. You can still see some detail, but I think you lose, you lose all the work that you put in, in my opinion, again. Um, so this is a textured pattern. You know, there's one row of knit, one row of alternating knit and purl. And she calls it sand stitch because it's not technically seed stitch. Um, and I just, I love this. And in this colorway, like the subtle variation you get is just enough to have depth to the work without detracting from the pattern. And I am so obsessed. 
Um, if you guys didn't see in my stories, I actually cast this on while I was waiting in line, camping outside of a record store in 30 degree temperature in rain, hail, and sleet. Uh, that's, that's what I did my Friday night. I camped outside of a record store for record store day titles. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, in addition to yarn, I also collect records. So vinyl records. Um, so that's what I was doing Friday night and that's how far I got while I was camping outside. Um, and I did sleep by the way, I was the most comfortable person in line. I had a very thick bean bag, so I didn't feel the cold of the, the pavement. I had a thick long parka and blankets and I slept so well. It was probably the best night's sleep I've had since before I left for my dad's. Like really, I was out um, and it was amazing. But anyway, yeah, so this colorway, just completely stunning. And I'm so, so lucky that this came in when it did because I really was struggling to find a yarn in my stash that would fit this kind of texture pattern. Like I said before, I was running out of worsted. I didn't wanna do just a single flat color like um, the Kinetic Knitter I showed you guys last time, Oat. It's gorgeous, but I wanted something with a little bit more depth. And I got exactly that because like the subtle lavender variegation, it's just perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah. So that's that. I also am working on, I'm working on a lot of stuff, you guys. One is, well, actually, I'm only going to show you that, this, and one other thing that I finished because everything else is in like that awful just ribbing stage. And I can just show you guys a bunch of little donuts of ring of ribbing, but like it doesn't really show you anything. So yeah, I'm just gonna skip all that, okay? Uh, this is Bibliophile by Alicia Plummer. Bibliophile, it's a raglan sweater, top down, as you can see, and it's gonna have a pretty tight raglan. So that's another thing I discovered. I have a lot of like really big cozy raglans and I love that because I really like big cozy knits. Um, but when I wanna wear stuff to the office, I want something a little bit tighter because the big coziness, um, it just doesn't fit the vibe that I'm trying to strike when I go into work. So I've been telling myself, oh, I need to get more like a little bit more tight, tighter fitting, professional looking knits. So that's when Alicia Plummer posted her, her test call and I was like, it's perfect, it's perfect. Um, I chose to do, so she has like three or four different neckband instructions. I chose to do the folded over crew version because I think it looks nice. You can see here, um, I messed up on the the folded over neckline again. I don't know how I've gone like years without ever messing up on it. And then suddenly this year it's like, no, you're not gonna do it right. And it's like super slight. I don't think anyone's gonna notice. Now that I'm looking at it, I notice it a lot more. <sighs> on the screen, I notice it a lot more. I might go back. I don't know, I'll think about it. But um, this colorway is lovely. Um, it's called Rose Gold from The Wandering Flock. You may remember it because I showed how identical it is, not identical, how similar it is to the Scranton Stitchers um, colorway uh, Heart of Gold. Like they're very, very, very close. Um, this one has green speckles interspersed with the gold, so that's slightly different. And whereas this one has orange speckles interspersed with the gold, but um, very similar. And I put a bunch of options because it's such a simple raglan. I had so many options uh, for fingering weight uh, sweater quantity that I had like decision fatigue, freeze, I don't know what you call it, but I just couldn't make up my mind. So I put a yarn poll in my Patreon and um, for people who are the second tier and third tier, they get to vote. I'm trying to put this back in there. They get to vote on yarn choice, especially when I get, you know, that decision fatigue. And they voted for this or another yarn. It was a tie, but Alicia Plummer, who is the designer of Bibliophile, uh, she described, I asked her opinion and she made descriptions of all the different yarn choices. There were like five yarn choices and she's so sweet. She like came up with like one for every single one. One was bunnies, one was um, strawberries and cream, the other one was peaches, this one was peaches. 
Um, and then they were all just so sweet, so cute. Um, she was like, one reminds me of a spring day. Like, she's so sweet. And I said, I was like, that is so wholesome, but like, so wholesome. And she's like, okay, I'll make, I'll make a, a rougher one. So she like did a not safe for work version, basically. And <laughs> so this colorway is peaches, is the wholesome version. And the not so wholesome version is getting revenge on your ex. And I said to her, I was like, you know what? You've made my mind up for me because I love peaches and who couldn't use more of getting revenge on your ex? So that's the color I chose and it's progressing nicely. I didn't get to knit like really at all last week. It's only on my like 10 minute train ride into work. So um, we're cranking away at it and it's getting there. I'm almost done with the body. We're getting there, um, but I'm really excited and I love how pretty it's working out and I'm not alternating skeins. I'm not alternating skeins at all. And there's no pooling in this thing. It's so good, right? Yeah, I have started the second scheme, by the way, so so it's going. Um, but yeah, Whew. really, really want to get something done. I, I could use that little mood boost right now. Um, then the finished object that I wanted to show you, like I said, I only got one object finished in the month of April, and it's like bumming me out. <laughs> I know other people would say like, oh, you're at 10 sweaters this year, like that's enough. And and I know I, I always say that to you guys, like we shouldn't be so preoccupied with productivity. I don't think you guys should be concerned with productivity. I feel like I am concerned with productivity. And it's just an example of like, we can tell other people how much they deserve and how great they are, but we don't give the same grace to ourselves. And I'm like, maybe, maybe you should just calm down. Like maybe it's okay that you're only at 10 sweaters this year. Um, I'm trying to internalize that, but we'll see. And uh, before I forget what I'm talking about, this is the finished object. It is Butterfly Blooms by Tori Knits. I showed you guys this last time, but I hadn't finished the sleeves yet. And I love it. I wanted to wear it, but it was hard for me. It was going to be hard for me to wear it and show you the sleeve detail, which is what I really wanted to do. So that's the shape of the sleeve. Um, obviously, it's not a straight sleeve. So what I chose to do is I chose to mod it. Um, I told you guys I was going to do three quarter lengths, which I did technically. Um, but what I did was I decreased only three stitches along. So you can see the slight decrease. And then I started increasing at a pretty high rate. So every third round, I would increase a stitch on each side. So you could see the increases here. And then I added uh, color work on the hem, which I told you guys because I wanted to use more of the main color or the contrast color because I like it so much. And again, this yarn is from Little Wing Fibers, whom I love. She's amazing. Like, so good. So good. Her colors are so good. Um, but yeah, you can see the increases I made here and it makes this kind of sleeve. And I just thought that uh, for such a delicate color and for such a, a springtime feminine yoke, I wanted a sleeve that was equally as feminine and delicate looking. And so I thought a little bit of drama from the bell sleeve makes it feel like a butterfly wing and uh, it's symmetry in a way. So yeah, I really love it. Um, I have posted sneak peeks of me wearing it on my Instagram, but I do have finished object photos that I will share once it's released, um, which I believe is just in a couple days. Um, and again, that's by Tori Knits, and you, I will link her, of course, as well as everybody else. So you really, really should follow her to keep an eye out on this release because like, I, I love this thing. I love this thing. Um, yeah. Okay, that's really all the progress that I've made. Like I said, everything else is just ribbing and it just doesn't look that good. Um, I have so many project ideas going on in my head. I like hit this burst of inspiration about my own designs. Um, I, I think this is going to be my year. This is going to be the year that I really do it. And I'm so excited. Um, but I have nothing to show you yet. Just know that I'm working on a lot. I'm trying to do a lot. Can I have it all? It's unresolved. Um, it's a big, I don't know yet, but if I can, or if I can't have it all, but I can have some, 
you will be the first to know along with me because uh, I would sure love to know. Okay, you guys, um, it's been great. Uh, wish me luck on date number three of this week and uh, I will see you guys soon. Be safe, happy knitting, and um, I love you guys. Bye.